Mediator or Menace? Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to The Right Opinion, the home of a twat with too much free time and Dr. Phil, he's been making the YouTube rounds recently. Don't worry, I'm not going to go trigger throne here, this will be the right opinion that you all know and love slash hate. Which quick PSA, by the way, I'm the superior tro, no question. But anyhow, we're going to take a dive into the culture itself that yields the man who has been the subject of so many videos of interest in the months of recent. Dr. Phil. Dr. Phil is the American talk show created by none other than the great Oprah Winfrey and hosted by Phil McGraw. It began airing in 2002 with the concept of Dr. Phil talking about various topics and often drawing on individual experiences with the use of everyday people as their guests to illustrate that. It's still going strong to this day and with the recent trend of content made on it, I'm sure it's not going to die anytime soon so we might as well get used to it. Now, I can't speak too much in depth about the old shows, but looking into the current repertoire, what generally happens is that most of the time, Dr. Phil tends to have some very irrational individuals appearing out of very exceptional extreme cases and tries to make sense of their behavior. It is important to note that Dr. Phil, in spite of the criticism that he receives, is a qualified clinical psychologist to my understanding, and generally speaking, does behave with enough decorum that you would expect someone of that stature to behave with. With that said, the issues that have been presented on the show are quite black and white, and although Dr. Phil may attempt to make sense of them, he is a lot more upfront than many psychologists in the field typically would be. Generally though, although there are certain preferred methods of counselling, there is no unanimous consensus as long as he acts within the ethical guidelines. He definitely has a few gotchas which probably don't endear the subject and he also has inclusions that enhance its entertainment value over welfare of the individual, but at the end of the day, given the fact that the individual may be behaving somewhat immorally, those sorts of one-liners and comments can serve as a counterbalance in that scenario. On top of that, it's probably what also kept it on air. I feel that many people don't watch beyond the base value that it can provide. You don't really watch Dr. Phil for its educational value. With that said, it does have a softer edge to it than, I mean, in England, where our equivalent is the Jeremy Carl show, which involves Jeremy Carl calling people disgraceful and acting disgusted, while some sexually frustrated fella with no front teeth is sat on the couch. It's not a show that enhances people's lives, to say the least. So comparatively, Dr. Phil probably does a better job there. However, there is one clear distinction that Dr. Phil and perhaps some other American variations do have, which has been simmering cause for philosophical debate, which I thought would be cool to discuss in today's video. We often ask ourselves, at what age does a child become responsible for their own actions? I think we all know what direction we're careening in here. Yes, we're going to talk about her, Danielle Brigoli, and I have bided my time, but she is just too much of a fascinating case study to be ignored. Not necessarily as the whole topic of this video, but as someone who is not just a symptom of the worst of culture, but of how that culture can somehow respond and promote that behaviour on the basis of its exceptionalism alone. One of the things that many people seem to get when discussing Danielle Brigoli is that in spite of the fact that many YouTubers would approach her topic as talking about an adult, because she does behave like one, we seem to forget that she is still young, not legal to do things that many people would be, and she certainly wasn't legal when she appeared on the Dr. Phil show either, at the ripe old age of 13. Now I'm aware there is a certain flexibility within maturity, and although mature isn't the word I describe her as, I understand that some people can adopt certain traits of those outside their age range while retaining others, but there still has to be a line and principle that we operate on. And yet here we are, one and a half years on, with her as an international superstar, acting transparently out of her depth. It shouldn't have happened, why did it happen? Well, it all began with the Dr. Phil episode. For anyone who wasn't aware, which I assume most of you are, due to some negative audience interaction, her responses appeared to escalate and she told the audience to quote, catch me outside, how about that? Catch me outside, how about that? However, her enunciation led it to sounding like, catch me outside, how about that? Which is what precipitated the eventual attention. What a lot of people forget that in that interview, there was actually a lot of meaningful content espoused by Dr. Phil and in a way that was undermined by the now viral acts. In a way, I think this event outlined the morally ambiguous area of Dr. Phil's show, the child viewer interaction. From a personal perspective, I do not think a child going on live television is the best form of therapy, as proven by Danielle Brigoli. And yes, she may be rich, but lifestyle is beyond money, and my thoughts are that this will not be healthy in the 
long term and it has been a very volatile ride so far even with the moolah certainly the mother hasn't helped but once again the platform was given and she used it on the surface level a televised interview doesn't do anything therapeutically special for a child that a covert interview can't do so why do people do it the initial answer would be for attention which leads to the conclusion that exploiting a child like that for attention is not very moral at all making the ethics of the practice very questionable however this is where the ambiguity enters you see it's hard to tell how much dr phil exists beyond the show and from what i've heard and what i've read they do involve themselves with enhancement programs with children who feature in something known as turnabout ranch now i cannot assume with absolution given how vague and convoluted all the information is online how much support is provided but it does seem they play some role in supporting children and improving their behavior at that place from the statistics analyzed there appears to be somewhat success from it although it only measures ratings within the first year afterwards so it's hard to imply anything long term from it it's also really difficult to work out how much support is provided because we only see the footage that's provided and once again it could all just be for views there's also the indirect knock-ons like the dr phil foundation which does good work from what i understand once again that's not directly attributable to having children on the show and we have to remember what this discussion is about children someone actively choosing to take their child on public television a decision that they may not be responsible enough to make i know it sounds slightly machiavellian but i'm not too bothered if an able adult appears on the show and doesn't leave any better off than they arrive mainly because they have to acknowledge the possible consequences from appearing on the show when you have individuals like sexy vegan they do seem slightly irredeemable some things cannot be cured but children are different for me they do not have the ability to reason whether they want to go on the show they may not be able to acknowledge the consequences at a certain age and if there is a clear disparity with how children are coming out of the program and it appears not to be effective in the long term then it may be right to address it and listen i haven't watched dr phil so i don't know if there's anything stated specifically statistical about that but printed information seems to be a rarity over the effectiveness going on public tv under such psychological circumstances can be stressful it can be positive it can be negative and it's clear there needs to be more evidence but i don't think that should stop dialogue or at least prevent situations like danielle brigoli from spiraling out of control because whatever part of her was salvageable has been thoroughly tested thanks to the evolving media and i don't think that a child should be put on blast for entertainment value alone what do you think? Are there any avid Dr. Phil viewers out there? Do we have any interesting statistics? I'd be very inclined to hear because I've Googled it and it's just not there. Apart from, you know, the normal journalistic articles saying Dr. Phil is evil and has a human zoo. And that's all very biased. And I don't want to just base it on that. But I'd love to hear. I'm kind of torn. Maybe you can persuade me. Anyhow, until the next one, I'm the right opinion and I'll see you then.